The downside of becoming a foolish ruler in the game through time travel may be pointed out by thousands of people, causing them to break their spine. There are also benefits, but if you do something that looks like a human, there will always be people who are grateful. Once the ruler fell into a coma, the antagonist boss Han Dongwen actually changed his mind and started a new life. Was it the result of being frowned upon with cold eyes, or was it the return of a prodigal son who refused to exchange gold? There are also vultures waiting to explode their fourth natural disaster, hard, hard, hard. Keywords of the novel Broken, I am a foolish ruler with no pop-ups, Broken, I am a foolish ruler. Download the complete set of TXT, Broken, I am a foolish ruler. Read the latest chapters. Chapter 1 Is Broken, I am actually a beast. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 is Broken, I am actually a beast Han Yang woke up and found himself lying on the belly of a stranger woman. Women are very beautiful, and the areas that should be big are also extremely slim. You're really full of long way today, the woman said coquettishly, your highness. Lying trough. Han Yang rolled over the bed and fell heavily to the ground, leaving stars in his eyes. How could it fall so heavily? How could the bed be so high? Oh my! The stranger exclaimed in surprise, your highness. What's wrong with you? Someone, your highness fell. Han Yang gritted his teeth and stood up, clutching the edge of the bed, only to see the carved dragon style of the bed, with three or four layers of gilded silk curtains hanging. Dragon Bed It's not his 1.6 by 1.8 IKEA iron frame bed. This is not home. After about half a stick of incense, Han Yang's lower back pain finally improved. He had already put on his clothes. On the left was the enchanting woman under him just now, and on the right sat a doctor with a gray beard in the chair under his hand. No, Tai. The imperial physician trembled as he held a bowl of medicine in both hands and respectfully handed it over. Your Highness allows the old minister to trespass. The imperial physician gently picked up the medicine bowl, took a sip, and then handed it over again. This means there is no poison in the medicine. Han Yang covered his waist, looked at the carved beams and painted rafters in the room, looked at the enchanting concubine beside him, and felt pain in his head. Your Highness, drink it. The consort gently advised him. He drank medicine, which was very bitter. Han Yang wiped his mouth and turned his head to stare at the concubine. I see you look a bit familiar. The concubine was stunned for a moment and said in a coquettish voice, Your Highness is really ungrateful. Isn't it my turn to serve you today? Han Yang smacked his lips and pondered for a while before saying, What's your name? Your Highness, you are truly. The consort's tone was somewhat sad, and she sighed. Don't joke about Han Qing anymore. Don't make any more jokes about Han Qing, don't make any more jokes about Han Qing, don't make any more jokes about Han Qing, Han Qing. Are you Han Qing? Han Yang asked word for word, sentence for sentence. The consort naturally nodded in confusion. The consort of Chia Palace, Han Qing. It was you who rewarded Han Qing with staying in Chia Palace. Han Yang's pupils widened and his breathing became heavy. I. The imperial physician looked at Han Qing, and Han Qing looked at the imperial physician. I am. I am Wen Jun, Han Dongwen. Han Qing shook his head. The imperial physician shook his head. Han Yang breathed a sigh of relief. It's good if it's not Korean. That foolish ruler, who indulges in extravagance and debauchery, indulges in wine and meat, indulges in debauchery, and is extremely incompetent. He is sickly and is known as the Plague Lord in Korean Dongwen. It's good if it's not him. You are a wise ruler. Han Qingru said softly. Your Highness is wise and wise. Do not listen to the idle talk of ignorant people. As for the words of the Plague Lord, it seems to me that we should find the person who said these words and execute them all over the house. 
The imperial physician coughed excitedly. Hanyang language barrier. Wen Jun, written in Korean Dongwen. Opening a history book, no matter which country's history it is about, one cannot find the name of this person. This is a false history. This is a fabricated history. Han Yang. Han Dongwen's forehead oozed a cold sweat as big as soybeans. He waved his hand and said, Let's go out. The imperial physician bowed deeply, put away the medicine pot tray, and turned around to go out. Han Qing sat on the side, motionless. Han Dongwen looked at her and said, You go out too. Me too. Han Qing was obviously surprised, as if he had never expected Han Dongwen to give such orders. But whether it was the consort or not, she immediately nodded, put on a robe, and left the room. Your Highness, take a good rest tonight. Tomorrow night, Han Qing and Ku Er will come together to serve you. She spoke very softly and seductively. But just after Han Qing left, Han Dongwen's spine remained straight. He remained motionless, vigilant as he watched the direction of the beautiful woman's departure. After confirming that she had walked far away, he seemed to have relaxed all his muscles and took a long breath. Damn it, Korean Dongwen. Even if it's time traveling, how can it be Korean Dongwen? The nightgown embroidered with gold thread was wrinkled by him. He has read novels and TV dramas, and he knows he has no choice when it comes to traveling. But Korean is not good. This, Seven Palaces, in Han Dongwen is even worse. Because Han Dongwen is about to die. Because it was Han Qing who killed him. Once again, this is a fabricated history. History has no author, but history books have authors. The author of the fabricated history cannot find this person. Han Dongwen swallowed his saliva and paced back and forth next to his tall dragon bed. He was once a witness and participant in this fabricated history. He was once a part of this fabricated history. The memory that appears incredibly clear in the mind is proof. For example, this is the Seven Palaces, the Palace of Wenjun, in Korean. For example, the territory of Wenjun in Han Dongwen was the small southwestern country of Simeng, where the people suffered greatly. Han Dongwen patted his cheek, trying to make himself more conscious. He recalled more facts. For example, Wenjun Han Dongwen can launch a campaign to suppress the Simming Rebellion after triggering it. For example, there is a decent ring in the drop of Wenjun Korean Dongwen. For example, this is a fucking game. Han Dongwen climbed onto his bed and organized his thoughts. This may be the time in his life when he needs a clear mind the most. After all, no matter how confused you are, you will really die. Game, okay, I still remember, this is. This game is called, however in. A very strange name. The era was when holographic games were popular, and inserting a tube in the back of the head was already a basic practice. What is posterior cerebral intubation? People live in this world, what we see and hear, what we eat in our mouths, and what our skin feels are nothing more than signals received by the brain, a powerful processor. Intubation is the process of simulating signals to be processed by the brain. What does it mean? To confuse fake with real, as long as there is a corresponding programmed signal flow, input it into your brain, and the globally popular beauty supermodel will immediately be charming under you. That's the meaning. When everything can be simulated and basic desires are satisfied, people pick up more complex pursuits again. Story So immersive movies emerged, and people realized that I also wanted to participate in them. So extreme realistic games destroyed other cultural and creative products, and people became heroes or dragons in one realistic world after another. But it's not enough. The human species is still savage. Being emperors in each false world is not enough. What is more stimulating than the concept of strong? It's stronger than others. The allowed plunder and non-illegal killing have taken over the market like a bloody storm. All entertainment markets. 
After all, you can spend a good night with the most beautiful dummy at any time, why bother making stars? So. Han Dongwen took a deep breath. So what are the selling points of, however Ian? It's a story. Not such an exciting story, not such an outrageous script. But rather a story where no one knows the ending. A story driven by artificial intelligence driven by real dot time player behavior. This is the advertising slogan. People no longer need to be soldiers in the vast sea of people, following established heroes to fight against demons. You can immerse yourself in demons and see what the next outcome AI has produced for you. Since that's the case. Han Dongwen opened his eyes and thought of something. Can I not die? There are many people who understand the differences between His Highness and His Majesty, and I am glad that everyone can read them carefully. There's no mistake, it makes sense. Let's continue reading. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Rules of the Harem You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2 Rules of the Harem To answer this question, Han Dongwen must remember how he died. As a boss, he was defeated by the player and fled to find the only safe place under the coup. Chia Palace. Hanching's Chia Palace. However, this consort had long hated this foolish ruler. She personally killed Han Dongwen and put an end to the tyranny of the small country of Simon. Hiss. Han Dongwen took a deep breath and felt a tingling sensation in his hands and feet. What kind of fear is it that the woman who just had sex with her is the one who is about to kill her? Han Dongwen collapsed on the bed, his brain running rapidly. Speaking of which, I didn't enjoy it just now. He stayed up almost all night tonight. The next day, the scorching sun rose to the east. A beautiful maid walked lightly to the entrance of the dormitory and lifted Lotus White's arm to knock on the door. Your Highness, the servant has come in to bid farewell to the morning. Han Dongwen rolled over from the bed and stretched lazily, moving his neck. Come on in. Yes. The maid outside the door responded softly. But Han Dongwen waited for a moment and found that the door did not open. What's wrong? Come in. He raised a slight voice. Don't be angry, Your Highness. The maid outside the door was clearly a bit flustered, her voice trembling as the door was gently and anxiously pushed open. Han Dongwen's eyes straightened. Why don't you wear clothes? It's already winter, and if you're just wearing a single shirt outside, it's already very cold. Although there was a fire in Han Dongwen's sleeping hall, it was obvious that the maid who was sweeping the room had stripped off her clothes outside the hall before entering. She widened her eyes in fear, clenched the broom in her hand, and stuttered, Your Highness, what are you saying? Slaves and maidservants are not breaking the rules. Rules. This rule is indeed somewhat absurd, as a maid who cleans the dormitory naked. Han Dongwen's eyes twitched and he gritted his teeth. You really know how to play, you plague lord. Put on your clothes quickly, there won't be such a rule in the future. He supported his forehead and turned around. The maid seemed to have heard some kind of fantasy, stood still for a moment, and finally understood the meaning of Han Dongwen. Then, she cried. What is she crying for? Han Dongwen was a bit puzzled. Why are you crying? He spoke up. Your Highness, Your Highness must be dissatisfied with my servant. My ugly appearance is my fault. Please rest and calm down, Your Highness. She was already crying and couldn't speak a coherent word. She grabbed the broom tightly with both hands, as if it was her last straw. The consorts and maids of Han Dongwen, who are close to each other, must be beautiful. So, when he became interested, he would always be fortunate to them. Those who don't like it will be killed. I want her to die. She had already knelt on the ground, barely holding on to the broom, crying uncontrollably. When her father was teaching on the frontier and conscripted her into the palace, the old man tearfully warned her not to anger the tyrant. But after half a year in the palace, she learned everything she needed to learn, 
and finally met the Holy Spirit for the first time, which angered Long Yen. Han Dongwen only felt that his mind, which had just become clearer, had become much more confused. She said she has an ugly appearance. Versailles, right. Han Dongwen was certain that he had never seen such a beautiful woman before. A real woman. Oh, Han Qing seems even more beautiful not right. It's not the time to think about these things. Get up first. Han Dongwen cleared his throat. I, um, I'm not angry. Don't try to put on your clothes with any ulterior motives. The maid raised her head in disbelief and blinked a pair of tearful eyes. After confirming that it was not her own hallucination, she dared not neglect and quickly put on her clothes. Cough. Han Dongwen awkwardly turned around. Your Highness, I have already dressed myself. You said your name is Little Red Bean. Yes, Your Highness. Have you just been in the palace for six months? Your first time on duty. Yes, Your Highness. Han Dongwen sat at a wooden table below the hall, and the maid who called Little Red Bean stood in front of him with restraint and caution. She has already put on her clothes. A dress with white embroidered red and gold edges, a dignified uniform that does not affect movement. Han Dongwen nodded thoughtfully. Okay. He muttered to himself. Little Red Bean blinked her eyes and nervously asked, Your Highness, I didn't hear you clearly just now. Han Dongwen reacted and smiled, It's okay, I said it's good, it's good. Of course it's good. I just entered the palace and made my first pilgrimage. What does it mean? Han Dongwen hasn't had a chance to ruin her yet. Maybe she doesn't hate me yet Han Dongwen pondered in his heart. A tyrant, a foolish ruler, isn't everyone in the world hating him to the bone. I can only say that maybe Little Red Bean doesn't hate me that much yet Han Dongwen frowned and pondered. Little Red Bean stood awkwardly, unsure of what the emperor in front of her was thinking, but at least he said a good word. Has my life been saved for the time being? I have tasted enough palace drama and political drama. Han Dongwen understands very well what he needs right now. He needs people. We need our own people. Little Red Bean, let me ask you something. Korean Dongwen is carefully phrased. He shouldn't use words like, I, to emphasize his identity anymore, as it won't attract his own people. Little Red Bean just stared and nodded. She was not very old when she was just conscripted into the palace, only sixteen or seventeen years old. Of course, this is another evidence that even the young girl was not spared by the Wenjun. What rules did you learn after entering the palace and before facing the Holy Spirit? Han Dongwen said, even pulling over a nearby chair and gesturing for her to sit down. Sitting next to the emperor. This is a position that only concubines can sit in, something that can only be done when they reach that position. Of course, Little Red Bean dared not sit down. She only stuttered and replied, Your Highness, after I entered the palace, I arranged to learn the rules for six months. Only when I come out of the welcoming spring palace can I serve Your Highness on duty. Han Dongwen squinted his eyes. He knew that Ing Chun Palace, in simple terms, was the training base for beautiful girls of Wenjun. To serve the plague lord, one should not only be beautiful alone, but also know how to win his favor. Don't be afraid, then tell me, what are the rules? The rules of Wenjun can only be described as exciting. Lust and vulgar, but to the extreme, Han Dongwen can only exclaim that it is wonderful. Is this a fucking rule that anyone can think of? Those who enter the sleeping hall can only be imperial physicians and women. All women must be stripped naked. This is just an introduction. As for the festive banquets, the monthly songs and dances, and just listening to Little Red Bean talk, have already made Han Dongwen feel a bit uneasy. I won't go into detail here for now. Your Highness, what's wrong with you? Little Red Bean said, lifting his eyes to take a look at Korean Dongwen. He waved his hand and said, It's okay, you keep talking. Another thing is the precepts. 
Anyone who has an affair with a man in the palace will have their entire family executed on both sides. Little Red Bean said, feeling a bit scared. In the Ying Chun Palace, she also has known sisters, who had been in love before, and I don't know them, all right. All right, stop for a moment. Han Dongwen waved his hand and looked out the window, what time is it now? Aren't you going to court today? Go to court. Little Red Bean instinctively asked in confusion. When has this master been to court since he ascended to the throne at the age of thirteen? Even at the most grand annual ceremony of the Lunar New Year, Korean Dong script is mostly about changing clothes and making appearances. As for imperial edicts, they are all written and spoken by the court officials. How should she answer this? Watching Little Red Bean's reaction, Han Dongwen lost most of his knowledge. He sighed and stood up. He had a lot of thoughts last night, including washing his hair and changing his face, becoming a wise ruler of the world, leading the country to prosperity and strength, and then abandoning feudal superstitions and running towards the goal of entering a moderately prosperous comic society for all. But now he needs to think about how to survive first. Ignoring the government, besides the Wenjun himself not wanting to, it is more likely that there is nothing to reason with. To put it simply, if the emperor never went to court, but the country is still in operation and the people are still being squeezed, it means that this country has nothing to do with him anymore. He is a puppet. The puppet who willingly succumbs to corruption and indulges in debauchery may have long been sidelined, so the mastermind behind the scenes allows him to live on his own and set a target for public grievances. Who is in power? Han Dongwen was a bit anxious. He realized he still needed a designated assistant who could serve as a staff officer. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 In Chun Palace. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 In Chun Palace When Xia Hongdu returned to the In Chun Palace, everyone had been waiting there for a long time. Everyone, including those sisters who have not yet left the Spring Festival Palace, and most importantly, our teacher, Lady Mi. Min Yang Yang's full name is Mi Yun. Although Sun Yang is a middle dot aged woman, she always understands men. In theory, she is not someone around Wenjun and cannot be called the Empress, but this Ing Chun Palace is her territory. Her daughters call her so, which naturally makes her much happier. She is the most anxious person waiting for little Red Bean. Red Beans. Sister. Red Bean Sister. The crowd almost swarmed around her in the middle like a swarm of bees. Min Yang Yang was the first to come over. She had the little girl next to her serve a bowl of warm red date and lotus seed soup, and on her left, she also prepared a golden wound medicine for falling injuries. After all, it was the plague lord who became interested and suffered some physical damage from his cruelty, which Empress Mi had also seen before. There was once a maid who was quite fond of him and was almost to be adopted as his concubine by him. Almost everyone envied her. Unfortunately, it was because he was too fond of his appetite that made him rise up, and in addition to acting, he resorted to various forms of physical abuse. By the time when Jun woke up the next day, the girl had already lost her breath. When the girl entered the palace, Empress Mi had also seen her parents before. They almost knelt down and begged Empress Mi to take good care of her daughter. It's best to never leave this spring palace. But how could it be? The only thing that Empress Mi can do is to prepare more such things, that's all. Are you okay? She looked at Little Red Bean nervously and with concern. The girl's hairpin was not messy, and there seemed to be no injuries on her face. If there is no injury on the face, it is already good. She seems to walk steadily, as if seems like I haven't even shed tears. Sister, are you okay? Is your body okay? Little Red Bean, come on, your highness, is he really as rumored? What did he ask you to do? This gossip is not gossip. Looking at the delicate faces of those girls, all they had were worries and fears. Little Red Bean hesitated for a moment and stuttered, He, your highness, asked me to dress. Wearing clothes. Mean Yang Yang frowned. 
Indeed, men's hobbies in that area can be described as chaotic, and it is natural for some to like specific clothing. What kind of clothing is it? The actor. The kitchen robe. Or the maid's uniform from neighboring West Asia. The girls were also staring at Little Red Bean. If they had learned, perhaps they could have saved their lives with just one outfit. Ah! Little Red Bean blushed a bit. Mean Yang Yang was anxious and said, You're telling me. Is it difficult? Is it difficult to make her wear his dragon robe? Little Red Bean shook his head in fear and said, No, no, your highness. He said I don't need to take off my clothes when I enter the dormitory. Mean Yang Yang was stunned for a moment, feeling that she had misheard. What does that adult want to do again? His Highness. Did you say why he doesn't need to take off his clothes? Miss Me looked straight at Little Red Bean. After hesitating for a moment, Little Red Bean nodded and said, Your Highness said that because the weather is cold, there will be wind chill. With one word spoken, there was no sound around. Feeling cold in the wind. Even their lives are considered worthless, yet they claim to feel a chill from the wind. Mrs. Me pondered for a moment and said, So, your highness didn't touch you either. Little Red Bean shook its head. A circle of sisters around you look at me and I look at you, and my eyes appear confused. Perhaps you're finally tired of it. Mean Yang Yang whispered to herself. Little Red Bean suddenly remembered something and said urgently, By the way, Empress, His Highness asked me to have a word with you. Mean Yang Yang opened her red phoenix eyes and quickly asked, What words? Speak quickly. His Highness, he said he will come to the welcoming spring palace in the next few days. Hua la 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 la. A bubble of urine entered the Huaxiang Pond. Huaxiang Pond is not a pond, it is just a nickname for the Korean Dongguan urinal. The bucket is scraped with the fragrant ash of the shady sandalwood, which neither produces mosquitoes nor covers the smell. This is already Han Dongwen's third urination this morning. Indeed, the kidneys are not very good. He muttered in a low voice, feeling that he had not enjoyed the pleasure and added to the troubles of frequent and urgent urination, which was truly unfair. Complaining, his thoughts quickly shifted to his previous thoughts. I'm not me anymore, is that a game or a game? Han Dongwen wiped his hands with a handkerchief embroidered with dragon patterned gold thread. Did I cross into a parallel world or become an NPC? He instinctively touched his pocket and realized that it was impossible for him to pull out a cigarette or lighter. He sighed and turned to look at the urinal, lost in thought. Fighting in games has been a thing that has been happening since the 20th century, and consumers have increasingly high demands for reality. They need to take a shower, shave, ride horses, drink alcohol, and have sex in games. Taking a bowel movement and urinating can naturally add a sense of realism. His mother, I don't even know if it's real or fake. He thought angrily. But it's not without a solution. No matter what level of realistic game it is, players cannot truly feel the pain of knives, guns, and bullets. Therefore, only in this regard have limitations been placed on analog signals. The upper limit of pain simulation shall not exceed 30% according to legal regulations. This does not mean that all pain sensations are proportionally reduced, but rather that pain simulation must not exceed 30% of an individual's pain tolerance. That is to say, simply pinching oneself to determine whether it is a game is not enough. It is necessary to find some kind of pain that exceeds this limit in order to determine the current situation. Probably the degree to which the cigarette butt is burned. Han Dongwen pondered, turned around and walked out of the Hua Xiang pool. Two maids were already waiting at the door. They just lowered their heads and didn't dare to take a breath, afraid of doing something to anger Han Dongwen. They are not concubines, but as servants, they do not need to find ways to win his favor, and no one will actively want to get closer to him. For them, the best outcome is that Han Dongwen looks down on them, that's all. So, just follow the rules and pray that he won't get angry. Han Dongwen looked at these two maids, 
who may be older than Little Red Bean, and instinctively avoided his gaze. He already understood seventy to eighty percent in his heart. They must have already suffered from their own torment. He also thought about how to compensate these women, but the most important thing right now is not this, it can only be temporarily postponed. To take a step back, if the pattern of Simming remains unchanged and he dies, according to the rules, these women must be buried with him, so it is also a responsibility to let oneself survive first. What's your name? A cold sentence almost scared the maid with her head down. Dun 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 she blurted her mind and whispered her name. But the voice was too low to be heard clearly in Korean. Ah, forget it, can you find me a hairpin? It will be delivered to the dormitory later. Han Dongwen tried to speak as softly as possible. Upon hearing the words, sleeping hall, the maid's body visibly trembled, but she still bent down to bear it. Han Dongwen nodded and turned towards the dormitory. Finally, he suddenly remembered something and turned his head, saying, You don't need to take off your clothes then, just leave your hairpin and go back. After speaking, he walked away without looking back, leaving only the two maids to take a deep breath and feel the fear of surviving the disaster. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Dingwa Sansi. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Dingwa Sansi The Sleeping Hall is a large standalone hall, and there are still dragon chairs and tables in the front hall, making it easy to receive more than ten guests. To the back of the front hall stands a seven-fold screen. The first three folds are carved wooden screens of Jin Nan, and the last four folds are woven brocade of Huahang, separating the east and west sides. There is a round tea table on the east side, surrounded by four small chairs. I saw the imperial physician last night and talked to Little Red Bean this morning, all of whom were next to this tea table. Behind the tea table is the dragon bed. On the west side, there is a small hall that Han Dongwen once didn't go to much. Inside, there is a black wooden square table, holding the four treasures of the study in two vertical bookshelves. The standing cabinet on the left side is full of classics, music, and lyrics. Han Dongwen has already scanned it a few times and initially feels that its value is not too great. The cabinet on his right side is the direction he cares most about. As usual, daily memorials and regulations are displayed here, updated monthly, for the ruler of a country to understand and make decisions. Han Dongwen is now standing in front of this cabinet, frowning. This cabinet is empty and spotless. Where is my memorial? There is no news website here, let alone internet surfing. If you want to know the outside world, what else can you do besides reading memorials? Someone. He poked his head and shouted towards the outside of the dormitory. Quickly, footsteps rushed over. Your Highness. You. Put on your clothes. Don't be angry, Your Highness, I am a servant. I could forget it, put on your clothes and call Little Red Bean over. Han Dongwen covered his head and calculated that it was time to officially announce the new rules, always like this, after all, it was unbearable. Now that he barely has a familiar maid, I'm afraid he can only trouble her more. Upon hearing Wen Jun's request for Little Red Bean to go, the women in the welcoming Spring Palace could only cast sympathetic glances. Sympathize and hope that the next one is not oneself. When Little Red Bean stepped into the sleeping hall on her own, her heart was in turmoil. She did indeed follow Han Dongwen's instructions and did not undress. The maid who was originally guarding the entrance of the hall looked at her, her eyes widened. Sister, clothes. She gestured to Little Red Bean. Ah, your highness. His highness said this morning that there is no need to undress when entering or leaving the dormitory in the future. Little Red Bean hugged her arm, indicating that the maid was unharmed. No need to undress. The maid's eyes widened slightly, but then quickly dimmed. Congratulations sister, I'm afraid you'll be favored by his highness. Xia Hongda shook her head and said, No, no, I heard from your highness that the rules of the dormitory will be changed in the future, and none of us need to undress. 
Ah. The maid opened her mouth, but in the end, she didn't say anything. She pointed to the dormitory and said, Sister, please go in quickly. Your Highness has been waiting for a long time. Even though wearing clothes, Little Red Bean still nervously bowed. Nervousness is also relative. She is probably the least nervous maid who can stand in front of Han Dongwen now. Ah, Little Red Beans. Han Dongwen stopped pacing back and forth and gestured for her to come. What about the memorial on this cabinet? Xia Hongdu looked at what Han Dongwen pointed out and lowered her head, saying, Your Highness, as you instructed, we have already dealt with it. Han Dongwen sighed and said, How did I give orders? There is no need to trouble Your Highness with daily memorials. Those who have already made a decision by the three officials do not need to be sent to the sleeping hall. San Si, as a former player, Han Dongwen is known. The National Law Department can be understood as the public security organs and legislative organizations, with the power and responsibility of maintaining social order and formulating and issuing relevant rules. The National Military Department can be understood as the top-level decision-making body in military affairs, with the power and responsibility of maintaining national security, guarding territories, and all military activities. The State Administration of Finance oversees commerce, agriculture, and agriculture, ranging from livelihood taxation to the development of commercial routes. In addition, just like every place has institutions of the China Banking Regulatory Commission and the Public Security Bureau, each military region has armed police forces, and the subordinate institutions of the three departments are also spread throughout the entire country of Simeng. It's a bit simple, but at least it's comprehensive. Han Dongwen nodded, as if many backgrounds of the game could still be referenced. That is to say, the daily reports of major and minor affairs are classified by department, and whether they belong to illegal crimes, national security, or people's livelihood taxation is determined by their own classification. Han Dongwen nodded lightly, while Little Red Bean stood on the side, afraid to say more. She didn't understand these things at all, and since childhood, she only learned some poetry and literature from her father who taught, so naturally she couldn't get in the way. What should we do? Han Dongwen asked himself. He couldn't possibly wave his hand. If someone comes, I will go to court to govern. From then on, the three departments will no longer make decisions and only follow my edict. That way, he may not be able to survive for a day. Your Highness is going to rebel. But this is somewhat helpful in identifying those in power. Since the power of judgment is in the hands of the three departments, the person who controls the three departments naturally controls Simming. However, can military, legal, and economic aspects alone control all citizens? Han Dongwen frowned and pondered. Yes or no? If I were an ordinary person and went downstairs to drink a bowl of soup. Without a national army, I'm afraid our country will not be strong enough. Let's drink some nonsense soup. Without national laws, I would be robbed halfway through drinking, or a hooligan would stab me on the street. Without a national economy, where can the soup come from? Let's all lie down together and starve to death. But what about after drinking soup? Little Red Bean, tell me about your family. Han Dongwen pointed earnestly to the chair and said, Sit down and say. Despite repeated refusals, Little Red Bean was still held down on the chair by Han Dongwen in fear. I only have one daughter in my family. She found that Han Dongwen listened very attentively. My father was a teacher from Bienzhou, and my mother had already passed away since I was young. My father did not continue playing and only opened a school until I was conscripted into the palace. Little Red Bean's voice gradually decreased. It's difficult for you. Han Dongwen's voice became a bit astringent, and he coughed lightly, you said, your father teaches, right? Little Red Bean nodded. This is the first thing that Han Dongwen thought of. After drinking soup, those who teach, those who move bricks. And those who work as police officers, soldiers, and those who work in the three departments naturally have to go to work. How to decide? 
appointment and recall, demotion and promotion, and failed recruitment. This is the most important thing beyond the three departments. How to absorb people into the three departments and become a part of the national machinery? Who makes the decision regarding the changes in positions among the three departments? What is teaching? 4. Han Dongwen asked. Teaching is just for the sake of making a living. Little Red Bean is a bit timid and also a bit puzzled. Why did the ruler of a country inquire so much about the family background of a maid here? Is it true, as the people in the Yingchun Palace said, that His Highness has fallen in love with him? No, 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 no. Han Dongwen shook his head and said, I mean, who should I teach? Why do students need to learn? Your Highness, there are the most ordinary ones who need to read and read, as well as those who study for the sake of scientific research. My father has a professor. Ah, the imperial examination, or taking the civil service exam or something like that. Han Dongwen nodded. He was about to ask again when he suddenly heard a report coming from outside the dormitory. Your Highness, your medicine has arrived. Medicine. That's right, when Jun's body must have consumed a lot of medicine. Han Dongwen nudged his chin towards Little Red Bean, and she immediately stood up and walked quickly towards the entrance of the dormitory. Sitting next to Han Dongwen, she felt uncomfortable like a needle on a needle. It was only by doing what a maid should do that she managed to calm down a bit. What is this? Little Red Bean took the tray from the maid outside the palace and asked with some confusion. Your Highness requested a hairpin earlier and sent it along with it. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 The Book of Inviting Immortals for the Year. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 The Book of Inviting Immortals for the Year, this is too hard, I'm sorry. The medicine hasn't been taken yet, and Han Dongwen just smelled the smell and felt a bit nauseous. Little Red Bean naturally didn't know what to say, just grabbed the corner of his clothes and lowered his head. What kind of medicine is this? He grumbled. Tiger. Tiger heart soup, your highness. I thought I was asking myself, Little Red Bean instinctively replied. Han Dongwen frowned and put down the medicine bowl in his hand. In, however in, he doesn't remember a restoration item called this name. The medicines and other items that are circulated by NPCs in the game and can be purchased at any time are very basic. As players gradually advance, almost all materials are circulated among players. That is, players who like to study production will purchase materials from the market, and then manufacture potions, talismans, scrolls, and even skill cards according to relevant production gameplay. This completely eliminates the demand for the inefficient potions sold by NPCs, and even becomes a meme. When mocking the poor level of production players, they will say that your thing is not as good as a blood stasis dispersing powder slash rejuvenating pill. The use of memes is diverse, and even if Han Dongwen has not previously specialized in production, he still remembers what medicinal herbs NPCs can sell. He has never heard of tiger heart soup. What are the specific effects of this medicine? Upon hearing his question, Little Red Bean immediately remembered the knowledge he had learned in Ying Chun Palace. His Highness has that kind of hobby that most people cannot sustain. It is precisely because of this indulgence that the spiritual energy in the body is damaged, leading to physical weakness and the root of illness. That is to say, it's empty. However, his body was weak, but his heart was absent. Under the decree of Emperor Wen, the imperial physician studied for several years and burned and crushed the bones of a fierce tiger in the northern Bailan mountain to make a powder. It was accompanied by Yang Yen flower and Zhuan Yo Teng to make this tiger heart soup, which Han Dongwen almost drank every day. Little Red Bean explained the origin of this tiger heart soup to Han Dongwen in detail, and he immediately felt that his teeth were a bit sore. This isn't this his mother aphrodisiac. I am already a plague lord, and I have become such a sick seedling. How dare I even drink aphrodisiacs like water? Han Dongwen bit his lip and said, I'll let it cool down before drinking. 
If in order to survive, it is politically necessary to find a foothold as soon as possible, then the most basic thing for the body is to stop this absurd life. Abstinence Go to bed and wake up early, exercise your body. Han Dongwen secretly made such a determination, and suddenly asked Little Red Bean as if he remembered something. It's almost noon, why is it only at this time that the decocted medicine is delivered? Xia Hongdu only blinked and said, usually. Your Highness also wakes up at this time. It's a bit early today, so the pharmacy probably doesn't know. I see. Han Dongwen nodded and said, do you remember? Why did I go after waking up yesterday? Although Little Red Bean was not on duty yesterday, His Highness's daily destination is something that all maids need to review once. Yesterday he played with flowers and birds, so it's not good to suggest him to go to the garden again today. Yesterday he played with fish and insects, so today he cannot propose a lake or pond. Your Highness, you got up yesterday and went to Lady Hunching's Chia Palace. You stayed there until evening. After dinner, Lord Wan from the Taishu Pavilion asked to see you, but did not welcome Lord Wan into the palace according to your instructions. After nightfall, you asked Lady Hanqing to sleep, and so on. It's been a day. Although Little Red Bean spoke in great detail, he probably only understood one thing in Korean. He fell into this Han Qing all day yesterday. Really, even if it's so beautiful, it wouldn't be. Halfway through the conversation, Han Dongwen lost his confidence. Han Qing is not so much beautiful as a piece of art. It is not without the possibility of addiction that such artworks can be summoned and used immediately. That gentleman is. Xia Hongda glanced at him and took over the words, Your Highness, Lord Wan is here to discuss the matter of inviting the immortal scripture for the new year. Yesterday, he specifically instructed the maid the next day to remind Your Highness. Please refer to the immortal classic for your age. This is probably the only time Han Dongwen can still be remembered by the courtiers, and then he cursed and went to the harem to find him. Only at this ceremony, no matter who the mastermind behind the scenes is, will it still be necessary for Han Dongwen to step forward. Because it is the season for the people to face the Holy Spirit to invite the immortal scriptures during the new year. Every year during the New Year's Eve, the ruler of Simon Kingdom should meet with all the people and lead the New Year's Eve celebration. Please bless the immortals of Simon and pray that they will continue to bless their people in the coming year. In theory, the value of the year should start at midnight and continue until the east turns white, opening a new year. But Wen Jun almost always shows up hastily and never takes it seriously. Even such a plague lord has to appear once, because in front of the people, there must still be an emperor, even if it is a puppet. At the age of the year, invite immortals. Master One As Han Dongwen muttered, his eyes suddenly moved and he said, Wen Yongxing from Taishu Pavilion. Little Red Bean nodded in confusion. Han Dongwen clenched his fist and his shoulders trembled slightly with excitement. Excited because Wen Yongxing is a loyal minister who can help him regain power and take control of the country. Not really. Excited because Han Dongwen thought of what action to do on the New Year's Eve celebration ceremony. Not really. Han Dongwen bit his lips, trying his best to make his thoughts and feelings less explicit. Wen Yongxing was appointed as the senior official of the Imperial Secretariat, and there was no affiliation between the Simon Kingdom. The Imperial Secretariat was a nominal secretariat that consulted and drafted imperial edicts for the Emperor, without decision. Making power. Now that the Emperor himself has no authority, this Taishu Pavilion is probably just pretending. As a result, the troublesome and insignificant matter of inviting the immortal scripture on a yearly basis was entrusted to the Taishu Pavilion for follow. Up. Han Dongwen doesn't take the plot seriously and often skips over a summary but he remembers Wen Yongxing very clearly. There is no other reason, it's just because this Wen Yongxing, a character created in Simeng, must have seen him. Wen Yongxing, died at the beginning of the entire game. Outside the palace, please come to Sendai. It's night, it's New Year. 
The people have already crowded the square, and soldiers holding long halberds have separated the vast masses of people from the outside of Sendai. From the hanging sun gate of the imperial palace to the immortal platform, there are a total of 360 steps. These 360 steps were already filled with soldiers standing on both sides, wearing the deep blue armor of the National Defense Bureau on the left and the meteorite iron black armor and red cloak of the National Defense Bureau on the right. Each room had ten people, and there was an additional masked general wearing a silver dragon helmet, but he had no weapon in his hand, only holding a bright lamp. He is so dignified. In a moment, like lighting a candle in a valley, the vast people suddenly became restless. Your Majesty. Coming. Coming. Dong. Dong. Corresponding to this commotion was the sound of all soldiers almost uniformly hammering their long halberds to the ground. After a few sounds, there was no more noise in the night sky, only the sound of the clash of gold and stone. Wen Jun walked out of the hanging sun gate amidst the deafening sound of war halberds. The wish of Sui Feng, the emperor invites immortals. Wen Jun held incense and worshipped in all directions. Standing beside him was an old scholar with graying hair, but with a hot and tight comb, dressed in a plain book robe. The one who salutes with a firm voice is the lord of the imperial library, Wen Yongxing. After the incense was added, it was expected that the emperor would deliver a speech to the people, but when he saw that the plague lord himself was just standing on the sendai and waving, he turned around and brushed his clothes away. Standing beside him, when Yongxing's face remained unchanged, only lowering his eyes and sighing in a voice almost imperceptible to others. Immediately, he stood in Sendai. Qingxi Meng Tianzi, Xiaoxian Xianxu Dongwen Emperor, Taishu Guzhu and Yongxing, on behalf of the Heavenly Immortal, all people should make a vow together, praying that the Heavenly Immortal will bless our Simon country with prosperity in long-term peace. When Yongxing struggled to stand up straight, his already somewhat old and stiff body, and shouted loudly towards a golden disc in front of him. As soon as the spiritual sound plate spread, the people in the square could hear it vividly, bowing their heads and quietly and neatly performing the act of offering incense. Wen Jun had already returned to the palace from the hanging sun gate and walked towards his beloved harem. However, the picture suddenly changed. In the clear and starry night sky, a beam of golden light suddenly descended, enveloping Wen Yongxing on the Sendai platform. Soldiers and civilian officials couldn't help but look up at the shining pillar of light. I saw Wen Yongxing's body slowly rising as if losing gravity, his hands waving in the air at a loss. However, the beam of light became brighter and brighter. In an almost dazzling moment, it suddenly disappeared with a swoop. The protagonist of the Taishu Pavilion, Wen Yongxing, also disappeared into the night sky. At the same time, almost thousands of beams of light descended from the sky throughout the country. Deep forests, small villages, fishing ports, mines the pillars of light throughout the country almost turned this vast land into a country of daylight in an instant. For a moment. The light suddenly dissipated. Where the light dissipates, if there are people watching around, they will surely be surprised to notice. From that place of light, people have walked out. Either male or female, or tall or short. They looked at the surrounding scenic buildings in a novel way, running and jumping with vitality, and roaring with passion. The people of Simming called these people who descended from the sky, outsiders, because they came from the sky but did not appear to have the aura of an immortal family. The story of Simming Kingdom in, however Yin, unfolds from this. Han Dongwen and Han Yang himself were also among these outsiders. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Visiting the Taishu Pavilion You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Visiting the Taishu Pavilion This is the scene where Mr. Wen Yongxing died in the opening animation. Players are not allowed to independently choose the location and country to create their characters. This is a random adaptation of the system, and there are more than ten countries, big and small, on the land of Zhongzhou alone. When creating a character, it may land anywhere. Simeng is just one of them, a small country. 
However, after the character is created, the game gives you endless freedom. As soon as you are born, you will rush towards the extremely vicious realm of purgatory. You don't know how to fly yet, but you can find a way to the heavenly immortal palace. You randomly arrived at Simeng and felt that you didn't like the local culture. If you switched to another country for leveling and exploration, it would be even more feasible. Han Dongwen almost pinched his thighs purple. When he was still Han Yang, it was only because two friends from the same studio were born in the Duchy of West Asia that he quickly bought a few tickets to join after creating the character. When I return to Simming again, it's just for a simple mission of suppression. He knows too little about Simming's situation. Let's go, follow me to the Taishu Pavilion. He startled Little Red Bean when he slapped the case, so he immediately nodded and followed the Plague Lord out of the dormitory. When Yongxing did not die, indicating that the game has not yet started. That is to say, from now on, to the beginning of the game, and then to the player having a certain level of strength to fight against the Plague Lord, it is his last time. Inside the Taishu Pavilion, there is a peaceful and tranquil atmosphere. The palace maids all serve the emperor, and in places like the Taishu Pavilion, the servants are all men. Only a few servants were sweeping back and forth the already clean courtyard, and a continuous sound of shao could be heard from the wooden pavilion and corridor. Li Lin. An elderly yet tough voice came from the other side of the pavilion, and the servants who came and went bowed one after another. The person who came was the Lord Wen Yongxing of the pavilion. He was dressed in a plain robe, with a slightly hunched figure, but it could be seen that he was still trying his best to straighten his waist. He called out to a young man sitting at the end of the pavilion playing the flute. The young man was dressed in clothing similar to Wen Yongxing, but his appearance was very handsome and handsome. In his hand was a jade flute, which he was playing with his eyes closed, extremely devoted. Li Lin The young man was obviously intoxicated by the sound of the flute and had not heard Wen Yongxing call his name. Wen Yongxing walked forward with his hands behind his back, holding a scroll of books and lightly tapping the young man's forehead. Ouch! The sound of the flute has stopped. The servants who came and went also breathed a sigh of relief. Master! The young man opened his eyes and saw the newcomer clearly. He smiled and stood up to bow. Li Lin, I have already told you many times not to play the flute. Wen Yongxing has a stern face. Have you checked the documents from the Immortal Classic? Have you done today's homework again? Master, everything has already been completed. The young man shook his jade flute with a smile and said, The silk and bamboo are elegant and enjoyable. It's not a bad thing to occasionally enjoy them. When Yongxing shook his head. Of course not, it's just that you're blowing too hard. This is the truth. The main text of the Tai Shu Gu Gu is Yongxing. With the assistance of the pavilion supervisor Zhong Li Lin, we should provide advice and suggestions to the emperor, and assist him in making national decisions. However, with such a plague lord on the table, when Yongxing had nothing to do, and the pavilion supervisor Zhong Li Lin also worshipped him as his teacher, learning some knowledge every day, and that's all. The Tai Shu Pavilion is not listed as the three departments, and the pavilion supervisor Zhong Li Lin is naturally not within the three departments. His main role is to supervise the entire Tai Shu Pavilion and not engage in any unfair or improper behavior, in order to avoid erroneous and biased advice that may affect the judgment of the emperor. But now I'm giving you a piece of bullshit advice. So this person, who was supposed to be the supervisor of the reviewing Tai Shu Pavilion, also paid his respects to the pavilion master. Zhong Lilin is quite friendly to people, and the people of the Taishu Pavilion have great respect for this pavilion supervisor. In addition, Zhong Lilin highly respects this teacher Wen Yongxing, who is also quick-witted, and Wen Yongxing himself greatly appreciates this student. It's just that his flute is really unpleasant to listen to. Did the teacher not see the Holy One yesterday? Zhong Li Lin smiled and asked. When Yongxing sighed and shook his head. Students guess, your highness, he must have been wandering in the harem again. 
When Yongxing widened his eyes and looked around cautiously, let the words go with the wind. Don't take advantage of the speed of your tongue and say things that shouldn't be said. Zhong Lilin smiled, but didn't say anything anymore. He just bowed and leaned forward to hold Wen Yongxing's arm. Yesterday, the students found a delicious tea from Bianzhou. The teacher went to the pavilion to sit for a while, and I will go and fry the water. Wen Yongxing nodded and didn't say anything more. Looking at the back of the teacher entering the room, the smile on Zhong Lilin's face slowly faded away. What kind of wind is needed to blow my words to the harem? He smiled self-deprecatingly, rolled up his sleeves, and turned towards the small pavilion on one side. Water, it could have been cooked by servants, but this tea is something he wants to offer to the teacher. It would be better if he could boil the water himself. Xian the main text of the Taishu Pavilion is Yongxing, and the supervisor of the Taishu Pavilion is Zhong Lilin. A woman's voice suddenly came from the front of the pavilion, and Zhong Lilin was taken aback. The water ladle in his hand loosened and fell to the ground. Holy Emperor! The sound of the flute is melodious, and the Taishu Pavilion is truly a place of elegance. A voice with a slightly weak foundation came leisurely, and who could be the one who shook his head and back, not the plague lord. When Yongxing and Zhong Lilin had already knelt on both knees and bowed. Han Dongwen saw the back of their heads and signaled to Little Red Bean on one side. Are these two people? It was Little Red Bean who had just spoken for Han Dongwen. She couldn't help but feel a little uneasy as she saw Han Dongwen looking at her. Fortunately, she quickly calmed down, and it was strange that this saint didn't come to the Taishu Pavilion a few times a year. It was strange for him to remember. She quickly nodded. You two are free of charge, please take your leave. Han Dongwen couldn't help but smile a little more on his face. After all, the feeling of someone kneeling is refreshing. It seems that there are still benefits to being an emperor. Thank you, your highness. The two stood up in response and saw Han Dongwen and the maid behind them, Little Red Bean. They couldn't help but stare at each other in confusion for a moment. Why did this person come here today with only one maid? Inside the pavilion, three people sat by the shore of a bamboo woven book. Water was boiling on the side, and Han Dongwen naturally sat in the main seat behind the table. Little Red Bean stood beside him, while Wen and Zhong stood opposite. Master Wen, I was unable to see you yesterday. I heard that you had important matters to discuss. Today, I have time to come. Did I miss any arrangements for the Taishu Pavilion? Han Dongwen pretended and said in a pretentious manner. After hearing this, Wen Yongxing shook his head repeatedly and said, Your Highness has been working hard and has specially come to the Taishu Pavilion to listen to my foolish words. How could there be any misunderstanding? Zhong Lilin next to him also bowed and said, If you didn't wait in advance, I hope your highness will forgive the disrespect of the Taishu Pavilion. Han Dongwen waved his hand and said, It's okay, I came without informing you. Little Red Bean, go and serve tea to both of you. Little Red Bean agreed and walked briskly around the three of them towards the side cabinet. Zhong Lilin seemed to remember something and glanced in the direction of Little Red Bean. This glance couldn't avoid Han Dongwen's eyes. He touched his chin and looked at the two people in front of him, his mind spinning rapidly. What attitude should we use to interact with them? Maintain the persona of Wenjun and avoid revealing anything. Or, like facing red beans, be gentle and try to improve your impression as much as possible. He was pondering when he suddenly heard the little red bean brewing tea and exclaimed in surprise. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Xuanji Pan You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Xuanji Pan Xia Hongdu lifted the teapot and poured the tea respectfully. The first cup is given to Han Dongwen, and the following two cups are given to Wen and Zhong respectively. This is absolutely not to be mistaken. What happened just now? Just as she was about to step down, Han Dongwen suddenly spoke up and asked her. 
Xia Hongbi was stunned for a moment, realizing that she was asking herself. She quickly lowered her head and said, Your Highness, I just cooked tea and recognized this as the canary sprout from the border island. It's been a long time since I've seen it, and I'm a bit surprised. She paused and lowered her head even deeper. Your Highness, please forgive me. When Yongxing and Zhong Lilin looked at the maid who had made a mistake without saying a word, their hearts couldn't help but tighten. His Highness's demanding and ruthless treatment of maids is well dot known to everyone. Han Dongwen laughed and turned to look at Wen Yongxing, saying, Lord Wen, is this really tea from Bianzhou? Wen Yongxing was taken aback and was about to say something when Zhong Lilin beside him spoke up, Your Highness, Lord Wen doesn't know that this is the coarse tea brought by Wei Chen. It is indeed the canary sprout from the border region. Han Dongwen nodded and gently pushed his cup towards Little Red Bean, saying, Although I'm not in my hometown now, it's always good to have a cup of home tea. As soon as they spoke, the remaining three were all stunned. Suddenly interested in political affairs. It is inevitable to be feared by people for having ulterior motives. Keep it as it is. Time waits for no one, and some changes need to be made at the moment. So, those seemingly insignificant yet prejudiced details are the more appropriate choices at the moment. Of course, even without these many thoughts, Han Dongwen couldn't bear watching the girls like Little Red Bean suffer. Thank you, Your Highness, for giving me tea. Little Red Bean didn't hesitate. This is the rule of the companion, you can do whatever you want. Is it fortunate that I didn't dislike what I did this time? She lightly touched the tea cup, blew away the tea foam slightly, and her vermilion lips parted to take a careful sip, emitting a satisfied whimper from her throat. It is indeed the flavor of the frontier. My father used to write, and she loved to play with ink ink stones, which made her hands dirty. As I grew up, I learned to cook tea and grind ink for my father. My father only writes when he is in a good mood, and he always drinks good tea like canary sprouts when he is in a good mood. A hint of tea fragrance reminded her of the time when her father smiled and wrote, teaching her poetry and books. She opened her eyes with some reluctance, gently lowered the teacup, and lowered her head deeply. I will bring another cup to your highness now. Thank you for giving him tea, your highness. She thanked twice, and the latter one clearly spoke slower and deeper. Han Dongwen nodded and turned to face Wen Yongxing, saying, Mr. Wen must have reported to the duty officer yesterday about the matter of requesting the immortal scripture. Wen Yongxing had not yet regained his senses and was stunned for a moment before he spoke up. Yes, yes, your highness. As the new year approaches, the edict to request the immortal rite at the end of the year still needs your highness to review it, and the immortal rite also needs your highness to wear it in advance. Xianli. Han Dongwen is really puzzled this time. Exactly, this year marks the age of Xiaojia, which is more formal than previous years. Your Highness, as the Emperor, should wear immortal rituals on his body and then invite immortals to offer incense. Xiaojia lasts for thirty years, and the old minister is worried that Your Highness has never been worthy of Xiaojia, so he reported to Your Highness earlier. When Yongxing spoke very sincerely, he couldn't think of any other way to make the emperor who couldn't stand the wall more serious, so he could only try to explain the reason clearly and hope that it would have a slight effect. Of course, he hopes so much every year, but this person leaves early every year, that's all. What about today? To his surprise, Han Dongwen nodded seriously as if he had heard it. I understand, Lord Wen, what exactly is this immortal ritual? As when Yongxing said, this so dot called immortal ritual must be some kind of object that needs to be worn on the body to participate in the invitation ceremony. Upon hearing Han Dongwen's words, Wen Yongxing, whose eyes had just brightened up, couldn't help but sigh in his heart. Wandering in the harem, the wine and fragrance are fragrant. Surprisingly, he forgot even the immortal gift bestowed upon Siming by the immortal. Your Highness, naturally they are the three treasures of Xuanji Plate, Yinpa Sword, and Chongyang Crown. Bao. Han Dongwen's pupils narrowed. Is it the equipment in the game? 
Speaking of which, Han Dongwen has yet to find any skills, talents, or equipment in, however in. The kind of casually picking up a sword and then lighting up a virtual panel to display attributes did not happen, which has kept Han Dongwen puzzled. Is this a game or another time and space? If it is the latter, it is very dangerous, which means there will be no outsiders, no players in the future, and I don't know how the story will develop. But if there were that kind of virtual panel and a beautiful female voice in the system sending herself this task, it would probably be much easier. Unfortunately not, Han Dongwen was extremely nervous. These three so dot called immortal gifts, whose names sound intimidating and require oneself to wear them in advance, are truly good news. Master Wen, it's not too late. Today, take me to invite the immortal ceremony, so that I can prepare for the New Year's Eve. He said decisively. Your Highness. When Yongxing blinked in confusion, then quickly nodded and said, Yes, Your Highness, Xianli has been invited to the Taishu Pavilion. Lord Zhong and I will go and invite him. We will go. Is this the immortal right? Yes, Your Highness. Didi, item level. Divine, attack power. 999999 A similar good thing did not happen. In front of Han Dongwen were three antique pieces covered in bronze green. Double ninth crown. He pointed to the tattered crown, which looked weathered, with a somewhat difficult expression on his face. Exactly. When Yongxing bowed and replied. Han Dongwen remained silent and solemnly lifted the somewhat heavy crown, tentatively putting it on his head. Nothing happened. Surprisingly, nothing happened. He shouted loudly in his heart. Is this the Yimpa sword? He pointed to the flat iron rod about one meter long, covered in copper green, and asked. When Yongxing and Zhong Lilin nodded. Han Dongwen held the Yunpa sword in his hand and watched it repeatedly. Nothing has happened yet. Unfortunately, he thought. Finally, the name is a very powerful Xian Ji plate, but it is actually just a round metal plate the size of a palm. Similarly, it is covered in copper rust, which indeed looks quite old. Han Dongwen put down the heavy Yunpa sword in his hand and reached out to pick up the Xuanji plate, suddenly froze. Then, he flipped the Xian Ji plate back and forth, but his gaze turned to Wen Yongxing and Zhong Lilin. Your Highness. Sensing Han Dongwen's gaze, Zhong Lilin nodded and asked. It's okay. Han Dongwen gently shook his head and looked at Little Red Bean behind him. Seeing that she had no reaction, he put the seemingly weighty Xian Ji plate into his arms. Your Highness, according to the rules, all the immortality gifts should be prepared during the invitation ceremony. As for before the invitation ceremony, there is no need to bring only one item with you. Wen Yongxing quickly said. Exactly. Han Dongwen patted the Xian Ji plate on his chest and said, that's it. Wen Yongxing nodded and said yes, but Zhong Lilin beside him blinked silently. If he hadn't maintained his humble expression, he would have frowned. His Highness, when he examined the Xuanji plate, his expression was clearly different from the first two immortal gifts. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Access to the Forum You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Access to the Forum After watching Han Dongwen's back leave for a long time, when Yongxing and Zhong Lilin put down their bowing hands and stood up straight again. But their eyes were confiscated for a long time. Sigh. President Wen Yong sighed and said, If Your Highness could be in such a good mood every year, it would probably be easier to handle the affairs of the Taishu Pavilion. Zhong Lilin frowned, still unable to retract his gaze, only looking towards the direction in which Han Dongwen had left. Teacher, do you think today is the reason why His Highness is in a good mood? When Yongxing gave a bitter smile and said, perhaps, for whatever reason, being able to see His Highness and still do something serious, you and I are already lucky today. Zhong Lilin remained silent, just nodded and returned to the pavilion to sit down. That made. He suddenly spoke up. 
That maid is different from the ones I have seen in the palace. When Yongxing was stunned for a moment and then said, it looks like he's still young. Maybe he just came out of the Yingchun Palace. Students don't mean that. Zhong Lilin shook his head and said, she doesn't seem to. Not sad. Not tragic. What does this mean? It's still a tragic thing to serve as a saint. Zhong Lilin pondered his wording and finally sighed, her eyes are still bright. After listening to his words, Wen Yongxing remained silent for a while, but in the end, he just picked up his tea cup and took a sip, then put it down heavily. Just seeing Little Red Bean wearing a skirt and following Han Dongwen back to the dormitory slowed down the movements of the other maids who were sweeping and holding the lamp. Their gaze turned towards Little Red Bean, making her feel somewhat uneasy. But the emperor walked forward without looking back, so she could only follow. As the sun set in the western mountains, red clouds scattered through the window frames into the dormitory. Little Red Bean consciously went to light the lights everywhere, but Han Dongwen walked straight to the side room of the library and sat in front of the desk, his face solemn. Your Highness, we can have dinner now. Little Red Bean stepped forward and reported. After listening, Han Dongwen nodded. He had already skipped lunch today and was indeed a bit hungry. After a moment of contemplation, he said, You ask that, the imperial kitchen, to bring the food here and then go rest. According to the rules of Wenjun, the evening meal must be served by seven maids with their bodies and mouth to mouth with wine. Han Dongwen, who decided to abstain for a while, naturally couldn't bear this. It was better to settle it temporarily in the dormitory. Little Red Bee nodded, as if wanting to say something, but didn't say anything. Han Dongwen noticed that she was hesitant to speak, smiled, and asked, what's up, but it's okay to say it. After listening to Han Dongwen's words, she took a deep breath and said, I, I just want to thank the palace again. On this day, she didn't get slapped or beaten. The first lesson that Ing Chun Palace must teach. She was not even asked to sleep, and was even given tea to drink. This is very untrue. During the moments of brewing tea, lighting lamps, taking medicine, and following your highness's orders to do things, she felt somewhat more at ease, but compared to all the other unrealities today, she found herself still lacking in confidence. It's strange that she has some sourness in her heart from somewhere unknown at this moment. Harmful, no need. Han Dongwen waved his hand and suddenly remembered something. By the way, there's something else you need to do. Your Highness, please give orders. Little Red Bean said seriously. Go do something. No matter what, give her a reason. It was because she had to do these things, so she didn't beat, scold, or insult herself. This was a reason she could accept. Otherwise, she would only be constantly afraid, not knowing how long the good days would last, and not knowing whether the next time it would fall on her, it would directly fall into the palace of fate. After all, your highness cannot suddenly change a person. You go tell the Yingchun Palace. That, that. The main pipe of rice. Ah, uh, yes, tell her and the maid to say that there's no need to undress when entering or leaving the dormitory in the future. Han Dongwen wanted to withdraw many absurd rules and even enjoy singing and dancing in one breath, but after thinking about it, if the action was too big, he didn't know what kind of rumors there would be, so he only said this one. Yes. Xia Hongdu lowered her head and listened, took a deep breath, bowed and left the dormitory to walk towards the dining room. The dinner almost filled the entire table, and Han Dongwen had to stop halfway to avoid having nowhere to put his hands. Okay, okay, how much more is there? Temple, your highness, there are two kinds of tonic diet, a pot of soup, five pieces of small food. I will go now. Han Dongwen's scalp tingled, and he quickly waved his hand to the maid serving the dishes, saying, No need, no need, these are already very good. You go out, me. I don't want anyone to come in during my meal. The maids looked at each other and nodded in disbelief, repeatedly saying goodbye. They are really lucky today. If in the past, even if Han Dongwen didn't want to eat, 
they would have to perform in front of him. They retreated quickly, which satisfied Han Dongwen very much. The palace door was tightly closed, and the rice paper curtain in front of the window lattice had already been lowered by little red bean. Han Dongwen took a deep breath, sat back in his chair, paused for a moment, and took out the Xian Ji plate from his pocket. At the moment when Han Dongwen received the Xuanji plate at the Taishu Pavilion, his first reaction was to go see Wen Yongxing and Zhong Lilin. There is no other reason, only because the dazzling light shining on the Xian Ji plate should have attracted everyone's attention in the small book pavilion. However, Wen and Zhong hardly reacted, almost not even blinking their eyelashes. If it's installed, then it's also installed too much. Now the palm sized Xian Ji plate was once again held in Han Dongwen's hand. He looked back and forth like a thief for a moment before solemnly placing his finger lightly on the Xian Ji plate. The once weathered and rusty disc suddenly lit up with a shimmering light in Han Dongwen's eyes. The rust faded from the center of the plate at a visible speed to the naked eye. In just a moment, the Xian Ji plate in his hand had completely lit up, firmly grasping Han Dongwen's gaze. There was a flickering and undulating line of text that held the breath of the Korean script. A little short of the recommended configuration, is the brain pressure stable core enough to play this game with 4200. 4200 is fine, just lower the middle ear feedback and neural feedback that are too stimulating. Is it recommended if there are conditions? Last 5122, the middle ear feedback turned off, and the high dot altitude scene was just like a fake. 5600 has temperature compensation. Well said, where can I get free 5122 and 5600? Han Dongwen's fingertips swiftly swiped on the Xian Ji disc, browsing through one text after another. He trembled slightly with his fingertips as he watched, feeling a bit hungry and thirsty. A community of, but in. Someone is watching the promotional footage, exchanging their imagination about the game. Someone is watching the promotional footage. Communicating assumptions about the game. Someone. Han Dongwen bit his lips, his eyes fixed tightly on the disc in his hand, and his other hand casually picked up a few chopsticks to feed the food into his mouth, causing his teeth to tighten. He is incredibly familiar with this community, this section. He used to advertise for his own studio here, engage in intellectual battles with section managers, and even write strategy tips to smuggle private goods. It took him three days to post on the forum forum forum, but it was only discovered that he had been removed. Who is not an elite player yet? Help. He quickly compiled this short post, and prepared to describe the causes and consequences in the post. Error. Encountered a problem, end of this chapter. Chapter 9. Missing Wang Ying. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9. Missing Wang Ying what problem? No one told Han Dongwen. He angrily tried countless ways, including replying, posting, private chatting, and reporting. We all encountered a problem. I can't even like it. The current Wen Jun looks like he's not eating well and playing with his phone while eating. Unable to communicate, can only browse. He muttered to himself with a solemn expression, and his fingertips lightly tapped the table. My gaze once again turned to the forum. Pre-release of PV4, however in, preheating, AI generating storyline or the next path in the industry. This title piqued Han Dongwen's interest, and he gently opened the post. A picture moved before his eyes. Amidst the snowy sky and the towering mountains, there seemed to be a caravan composed of a giant beast named Docebo struggling to move forward carrying goods. The shelves on the giant beast also have torches illuminated by magical spiritual light. The merchants wearing snow coats do not ride on the Dospo giant beast, but stand on both sides of the caravan, struggling to walk knee-high through the snow. Han Dongwen's eyes flickered and he recognized that this was the kingdom he had visited before, the Principality of West Asia. The north wind is raging, and from the top of the snowy mountain, there is a faint thunder. The ground has moved. The mountain is crumbling and shaking. 
The fear in the eyes of the merchant was greatly magnified, and on the mountains, snow surged like white waves. Avalanche The crowd fled in chaos, and the Dosper beast was already running wildly, its screams seeming to pierce through the wind and snow, yet appearing incredibly small. Suddenly, the snow stopped and the thunder ceased. The fleeing merchant awkwardly climbed up from the ground and looked up at the sky. The giant beast, ready to welcome death, confusedly raised its head. In the midst of the snowstorm, a woman in white attire stood in mid-air holding a long spear. Her silver long hair danced fiercely with the howling north wind, like a queen commanding thunder and avalanches. Dagom. The merchants were like seeing a savior, crying and running around to retrieve the giant beast and reload the goods. Quickly pass, don't linger. The woman with silver hair holding a spear swung her spear horizontally, and the merchants below naturally dared not slack off. They quickly gathered their troops and continued to advance. The woman, known as the Grand Duke, stared at the merchant with her long spear trembling slightly. Once this group of people passes, she will no longer have to support the avalanche of the mountains. Suddenly, she seemed to feel something, her lips slightly parted, and she gently looked up. The next second, a bright pillar of light as bright as the scorching sun descended from the sky, enveloping her. Schwa, this is not a good onomatopoeic word, the sound is more like a silence, a silence of a force field, an end to resonance. Just like simming. Just like inviting Sendai. The beam of light immediately dissipated along with the Grand Duchess, and countless dazzling lights descended on every corner of the Principality of West Asia. The screen began to flow rapidly. All kinds of customs and traditions, all kinds of rugged wonders. There is a harbor full of pirates, and the largest black sail skeleton ship in front of the blood-stained port also shed a beam of light. There is a kingdom in the vast desert, and the royal family wearing golden crowns welcomes the beam of extinction in the endless black storm. As the screen turned, Han Donwen's eyes twitched slightly. Arriving at Simeng. What catches the eye is the warm fragrance of soft jade, the harem of warblers singing and swallows dancing. He saw. He saw himself, holding his concubine and laughing loudly, pouring red wine from his cup onto the naked maids, asking them to dance on the memorial. He saw the invitation to Sendai and saw Wen Yongxing. After the beam of light disappeared along with Wen Yongxing, he saw himself scared and running into the depths of the hanging sun gate. Han Dongwen remained silent for a long time before exhaling a long breath. He was pondering something, but in the end he shook his head again. My gaze turned to the comment section. That woman with white hair is so hot. What does the movie mean? AI Riddle Man. I can't understand such people on the first floor. Is it good enough for you to find a virtual app? Do you have to play in the game? Can't it be fun to play games? The woman with white hair is so hot, 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 hee hee. Can you play in all these places? Can you choose? In the end, the scale there was a bit too big, I'm afraid it might be because the game wasn't done well, and these were all set up one by one. Those who care about the plot can take a look at this. Citation Some speculations about promoting PV, some speculations about promoting PV This is a post posted by a netizen named Charlotte Hooker, obviously, this is a more professional storytelling enthusiast. The content of this PV is not very extensive. Next, I will sort out my guesses one by one, and welcome friends with other ideas. Firstly, it can be roughly seen that there are four regions. Snow-capped mountains, pirate ports, deserts, and Chinese winds. It is currently unknown if there are any other regions. The white-haired Grand Duchess of the Snowy Mountains, the largest ship in the pirate harbor, the armor worn by people in the desert, and the person in the final Chinese-style area who is obviously the emperor, should all be the powerful and possibly the highest leader in the corresponding area. The white-haired Grand Duchess encountered a pillar of light and disappeared, 
as she was clearly sheltering a caravan in the snowy mountains at the time. Therefore, the disappearance of this pillar of light and its aftermath was clearly not her own will. Afterwards, the previously speculated regional leaders disappeared one by one into the beam of light, with two exceptions. Firstly, it is a pillar of light in the pirate harbor, just hitting the pirate ship without providing a close dot up view. Secondly, he is a dragon robed man from the Chinese style region. He was not sucked into the pillar of light, and it is very likely that he was a crown prince. The current emperor was eliminated by the pillar of light. The man in the dragon robe is obviously not a good person. It is speculated that he is one of the villains in the plot of the Chinese style region, and there is a possibility of being able to conquer and conquer. The main plot of the game is probably centered around the fall and disappearance of kings in various regions. Thank you very much for your love. While reading, free items are also what the author needs the most. Whenever there is a signed contract or something, the celebration will be added. More collection recommendations, update Natural GKD, end of this chapter. Chapter 10 Empress Eve. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Empress Eve Han Dongguan himself is not a player who cares so much about the plot. Therefore, he admired the research party like Sherlock Hook, as his name suggests, doing these things requires both a certain level of reasoning ability and the ability to overlook details. I'm afraid it's true that there is no distance between us. Except for when Yongxing, he can't be my father. He pondered so, smiled bitterly, stood up and paced back and forth in the room, organizing his thoughts. What do I need? I want to get out of the current predicament, I need to change the dying future. What should we do? In theory, the simplest way is to live until the player enters, then find a player, tell the other party that their data has been mistakenly intercepted, and travel to this point. Hurry up and find the game company. The premise of this approach is that even outside of the game, there is also a self that, for some reason, was prematurely connected to the pipeline and then mistakenly intercepted and classified to replace NPC Wenjun. But there's one thing that doesn't make sense. Time. How could he read these Mars posts here even though he has already played this game and played several versions? So, there is another explanation, which is that I did travel through time, but only time, back to before the game opened. Then, due to an accident, it was now intercepted in the game. And his body was quietly parked in a simulation chamber somewhere. Only under this assumption can his idea of seeking help from players be effective. Alternatively, rescue can be achieved through monthly manual inspections of the simulated warehouse. Han Dongwen sighed and put down the Xian Ji plate in his hand. When he looked up again, he had already grasped the silver hairpin he had sent during the day. The intubation interface is manufactured according to regulations and has no function of transmitting more than 30% of the maximum pain sensation. It's not that there is a limit, it's that there is no such function after manufacturing. This is for safety design considerations. Just like a bicycle, no matter what kind of malfunction occurs, it will not explode or exceed the speed of sound. Just like a slipper, no matter which part is damaged, it will not suddenly heat up, causing serious burns. This is a principle called facts. This also means that even if the device is damaged and brain signals are intercepted, Han Dongwen should not be able to feel too much pain. If it hurts too much, I'm really crossing over. He chuckled self-deprecatingly, gesturing with the silver hairpin in his hand, in that case, there must be some convenient supernatural power that makes players unaware that I am a real person. He closed his eyes, took a deep breath, grabbed his left earlobe, and suddenly pricked the silver hairpin up. Han Dongwen is not a medical student, after all, he doesn't know if there will be an inexplicable artery everywhere on his body. If it messes up, there's no need to bother that light pillar, or future players in Han Qin. He can get his results tonight. So, only this place where he can get his ears pierced and wear earrings, he can barely rest assured. After a moment. Blood. The silver hairpin is stained with blood. 
When the crimson blood gushed out, it must still be bright, but by the time it fell to the ground, it had already turned black and cold. Han Dongwen gritted his teeth tightly, even though he had covered his ears, blood still oozed a few red marks from his fingers. He had a silent sob stuck in his throat, and his widened eyes began to sparkle. His nose is a bit sore, and his lungs are panting in confusion. He was panting heavily, almost using all his strength to calm his trembling chest. But it's not that piercing one earlobe really hurts. The illusion that seemed to be able to go back in that moment was like the flame that appeared before his eyes, extinguished too abruptly. Ha ha ha. He laughed more unsightly than he cried. Ha ha ha. He stood up straight and laughed hysterically. Okay. He gritted his teeth, clenched his fist, and struck his chest heavily. Come on. Han Don Gwen. Brother Han Yang will come and live for you. Tonight is a moonlit night. The courtyard of Chia Palace was covered with petals from the cherry trees. It was supposed to be cleaned up, but as instructed by Consort Chi, it stayed there. This place was originally called Yagong, but it was precisely because it was rewarded by Han Dongwen to Consort Chi that it has its current name. Chi Hanqing leaned against the edge of the door, staring blankly at the courtyard covered in moonlight and scattered cherry blossoms. There wasn't much to look at there, but no matter where he looked, he would always be sad. It's better to just look at something that's not tiring and save some energy. She really needs to save some energy, otherwise she won't be able to hold on for another night. Empress Chi, Court There's wind in the courtyard, why don't you put on an extra robe? Chi Hanqing looked at the maidservant talking beside him and suddenly smiled, no need, I just like to be cooler. The palace maids all serve the emperor. All the maids and maids who come and go in the Chia palace remind her that she is just a matter of the emperor. Taking care of her is just a matter of taking care of the emperor, and this does not break any rules. Empress Yin must be arriving soon. The little maid let out a slight sigh and looked outside the Chia palace. After listening to her words, Chi Hanqing stood up slightly straight, took a slow deep breath, and closed his eyes. When I opened it again, it was already a beautiful expression of affection. I wanted to say goodbye, but it was already a natural charm, like two people. Her mouth also curved proficiently, looking at the Ting men of Chia Palace with a charming and pleasing expression. Two maidservants lit the lights and walked into the Ting men, then one figure turned out one by one, more charming and lively than Chi Hanqing. In such an harem, yet still able to liven up, Chi Hanqing admitted that he couldn't do it. So she felt a headache for this Empress Yin. Jiang Qian, when His Highness still favored her, he called her Kor. She was different from herself in every way, as if she never knew how Han Dongwen was. When she had the opportunity to enter Han Dongwen's dormitory, her happiness would never be as expressed by Chi Hanqing. If she really acted, Chi Hanqing only felt that she was a very good actress. How long have you been waiting, sister? Jiang Qian smiled, even lightly lifting her skirt and taking a few steps to grab Chi Hanqing's hand. Chi Hanqing only smiled calmly, and the two of them walked out of Chi Palace and headed towards the sleeping hall. In theory, Jiang Qian became a concubine earlier than Chi Hanqing. Even if Chi Palace was closer to the sleeping hall, it should have been Chi Hanqing who went to pick up Jiang Qian to show respect. However, Jiang Qian did not do this more than once, and over time, Chi Hanqing agreed. Your Highness, Kaur has brought Sister Hanqing to see you. Jiang Qian smiled and knocked on the door of the sleeping hall. After a while, Han Dongwen's voice came from inside the door. You two should come back tonight. Chi Hanqing had just breathed a sigh of relief in his heart, but unexpectedly, Jiang Qian smiled coquettishly and pushed open the door on her own, saying, Your Highness, you've been working hard all day, don't you even have time to make Kura feel heartbroken. Before she could finish speaking, she froze at the door. Ah, she screamed. Han Dongwen covered his ears, but at first glance, it was hard to see if the blood on his face was blood or if he felt unlucky with a black line. 
P.S. has signed a contract, and after the status is changed, there will be two daily updates, or a big chapter, the kind of thief. End of this chapter.